came out 31, I had a question coming out of section 9.4, number 57. And this was when Carl had two years to get um, to save $10,000 because he wants to buy a used car when he graduates. And somehow he found an account with 4.2% interest. I would love if I could find that and compounded monthly. All right, so the type of account he wants is something, it's a savings account, but it, it's what we call an annuity. And an annuity means that you're, well, typically you or whoever, is depositing a fixed amount of money um, oh, sequentially. And in this case, it's monthly. So when I say annuity, right, we're depositing fixed amount. And I can say um, like regularly, periodically, something like that. But I'll say in this case, monthly, because that's what I was told here is that they're going to do it. So imagine that you wanted to have 10 grand in a couple of years. How, how much money would you need to deposit per month um, to make that happen? And if I said 10 years, I'm not sure. Uh, it, it says here two years, so my bad. Um, and if you're going to do monthly deposits, right, if you're going to make deposits 12 times a month for two months, you're going to be making 24 payments or I should say 24, let me back this up, you're really making 24 deposits over the month. Now, to just kind of get a, a like a quick and dirty um, estimate, if you were going to take 10,000 and divide it by four, let me just check this on my calculator. If we were going to do this, right, that would be, according to my calculator, $416.67. Now, that would just straight up get you that money in two years if you had no interest. But since Carl's going to be earning about 4.2% interest, when I go to find this, this deposit amount, it's going to be a little bit less than $400, than $416. So slightly less than $416. And I'll just say then approximately $417. So whatever my answer is when I get out of this, it should be less than this amount because this is how much you would need if you were getting no interest. But Carl's making a little bit of interest. So when you have an annuity, that's going to follow um, a, a geometric sequence formula because it is exponential growth. And exponential growth is absolutely related to geometric sequences. You can see the exponential term in there, right? You have this, this n up in an exponent. So let's go figure out what's happening um, in terms of we could use the geometric sequence formula, but really because I have this $10,000 I want it to total out to by the end of the two years, I'm going to wind up, let me erase this just a bit, I'm going to wind up using the geometric series formula because I know that the 10000 is how much I want to have at the end. What I'm not sure about is a sub 1. Right? How much is it that I need to be depositing? Now, we think it's somewhere around 416, but let's figure this out for reals. Now, the other thing we have to do is figure out our R value. So keep in mind, back from our exponential chapter in chapter 6, we knew equilibrium was 1. Because I'm looking at exponential growth, I'm going to be adding something to that 1. And it, it we were getting interest at 4.2% but it was compounded monthly. So this means I was getting this interest given to me 12 times in a year. So what banks do is they'll take that annual interest rate as a decimal, and then since you're getting it 12 times a month, they'll do divide it out over 12. And when I do this, we're gonna get R equaling one plus, this number would be 0 0.035, or excuse me, that's a lie, 0035. So really, R is 1.0035. All right, now I, I kept that as a fraction in here, but, but you can make it work either way. All right, so let's, let's figure this out. We have S sub n equaling A sub 1, 1 minus R to the n, all over 1 minus R. So if we start to look at this, I have $10,000. That will equal A sub 1. That's going to be my variable. I, I do want to figure out what that monthly deposit amount would be. And I'm going to have 1 minus 1.0035. All right. And my N value here is 24 because I'm making 24 payments. And this would be in ratio to 1 minus 1.0035. All right. So let's just make sure I'm going to, I'm going to color code this because there's a lot happening here. But let's, let's try, let's go to red. Okay. So I want to make sure we're clear. 10,000 was my S sub N value. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm solving for a sub 1, so I'm going to leave that blank for right now. My r value was 1.0035, so I put that in here and I put that in here. And then last but not least, I was making 24 deposits, so I put my n value in there. And now it's a matter of solving for this a sub 1 term. So I have to get to a sub 1 somehow. And there's a bunch of different ways to do this, but what I did here was I just used all of my algebra to solve for a sub 1. So all of this shenanigans here is just me summarizing it in one step. But I can go through the steps one at a time if that's easier for you. So I would say this was 10,000. That would equal a sub 1 times 1 minus. This is 1 point. Actually, let's, let's figure out what this number is. So I'm actually going to crunch this term. Let me, make, let me get a different color here. I'm going to crunch this number on my calculator. So 1.0035 to the 24th power. Oh, that is fun. So that is going to be, wait for it, 1.087. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Okay, 1.087. Four six nine three nine six, and you might be thinking like, why are you leaving so many decimals there? Anytime you're dealing with exponential growth, just changing the decimals a little bit can really affect your answer. All right, so this denominator now is negative zero point zero zero three five. All right, I if I'm taking a look at this, I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply here, because secretly, oops, excuse me, this denominator is one. All right, so moving along, let me scooch this up. I'm going to have 10,000 times negative 0 0.0035. So I have negative 35 on this side. That's going to be equal to a sub 1 times, okay, when I subtract this out, this should be negative 0 0.087469396. Good God. And I'm going to divide negative 35 by that number. And let's see what we're getting here. So give me a moment. I'll divide negative 35 by negative 0 0.087469396. And I am getting, I'm a little bit off, right? So what I mean by a little bit off, I get a sub 1 would be equal to, according to my calculator, $400.14. And now when you do it exactly, when you don't have any decimal round off, you get exactly $400. So you can see here, even in going this many decimals, I still had a slight decimal round off error. And if you're like, oh crap, what if I had one on my midterm? That's fine as long as I see the work behind it. So that's, that's what I'd be looking for. So there is number 57, right? A bunch of work recognizing that when you have annuity problems, you're looking at exponential, excuse me, you're looking at a geometric sequence and then when you're talking about how much money is in that account, that would be a geometric series. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.